You may know him as the founder and CEO of Amazon.com and aerospace company Blue Origin. Or you may simply know him as the wealthiest man in the world. He surpassed Bill Gates for the first time in 2018 with a hefty net worth of $120 billion. However you recognize him, the man has become a household name. Today, we're exploring the history and habits of the world's richest man, Jeff Bezos. But the question remains, how did Bezos reach his current status, and what is his day-to-day -day life like? For one thing, he is a big believer in good night's rest. Unlike other billionaires who deprive themselves of sleep, he wakes up every morning naturally, without the aid of an alarm clock. Bezos is always certain to get a full eight hours of sleep every night. I prioritize it, he said at a dinner hosted by the Economic Club of Washington, D.C. I think better. I have more energy. My mood is better. I like to putter in the morning, so I like to read the newspaper. I like to have coffee. After the paper, he is sure to have a healthy breakfast with his wife, novelist Mackenzie Bezos. I like to have breakfast with my kids before they go to school, he said. To spend quality time with Mackenzie and their four children, he never schedules early morning meetings. But he does like to get his more intensive meetings rolling before noon. I do my high IQ meetings before lunch, he says. Like anything that's going to be really mentally challenging, that's a 10 o'clock meeting, according to Bezos. In fact, Bezos is famously not big on meetings in general. He's said to meet with Amazon investors for only six hours a year. When he does call a meeting, Bezos employs a two-pizza rule. He never organizes a meeting where two pizzas couldn't feed the entire group. Bezos apparently used to be an occasionally explosive boss, but there are rumors that he hired an executive coach to help tone it down. In fact, Bezos was seen by the public as needlessly quantitative and data-driven. Some even viewed him as cold-blooded. His relative lack of philanthropy compared to other billionaires has drawn a negative response from the public since 2016. The truth is, Bill Gates would still be the wealthiest person in the world if he wasn't so focused on charity, giving more than $30 billion away in the last few years alone. He and Warren Buffett have committed to giving their full fortunes away during their lifetime. Compare that to Bezos, who is still hell-bent on expansion and world domination. Considering his company has the highest valuation of any in the world, Bezos is pretty hesitant to give kickbacks to his own employees. In general, he has set a frugal tone at Amazon, which doesn't throw perks like massages or free lunch at employees. But he doesn't hold back while feeding himself. When it comes to meals, Bezos has a taste for unusual dishes. He was photographed eating an iguana once, and during a meeting with Woot founder Matt Rutledge, he ordered octopus with potatoes, bacon, green garlic, yogurt, and eggs for breakfast. When I look at the menu, you're the thing I don't understand, the thing I've never had, Bezos said. I must have the breakfast octopus. Bezos also has a fondness for food trucks. In 2014, he told Business Insider Editor-in-Chief Henry Blodgett about a phenomenally popular truck outside of Amazon's headquarters. It's out of control, actually, he said. Despite his high celebrity status, Bezos still tries to eat at food trucks when possible. Bezos usually keeps his afternoons clear of high-intensity meetings. If something that necessitates a high IQ meeting pops up later in the day, Bezos typically puts it off until the next day. By 5 p.m., I'm like, I can't think about that today. Let's try this again tomorrow at 10 a.m., says Bezos. And when he gets home from the office, Bezos helps out around the house as well. There's one after-dinner ritual Bezos always adheres to, washing the dishes. I'm pretty convinced it's the sexiest thing to do, he says. Bezos had a reputation as a nerd in the 1990s, but he turned that around in the 2000s when he started a regular workout routine and started eating healthier. Now, photos of the CEO at a recent conference elicited comparisons to Vin Diesel, as commenters noted his muscular appearance. Of course, Amazon sells much more than books now, and is a huge source of new movies and series, like The Man in the High Castle and Transparent. But the Amazon CEO is a Trekkie. Bezos even made a surprise cameo in the 2016 film Star Trek Beyond. Other than watching Star Trek, Bezos had... As another space-related hobby, gliding about in a submarine looking for old NASA rockets. He often brings his kids along for the adventure. But how exactly did Bezos reach his current status as tech titan and financial superpower? Not everyone knows that Bezos came from humble beginnings. Bezos was born Jeffrey Preston Jorgensen on January 12, 1964, in Albuquerque, New Mexico. The son of Jacqueline Geese Jorgensen and Chicago native Ted Jorgensen. At the time of his birth, his mother was a 17-year-old high school student, and his father was a bike shop owner. After Jacqueline divorced Ted, she married Cuban immigrant Miguel.
Miguel Mike Bezos in April 1968. Shortly after the wedding, Mike adopted four-year-old Jurgensen, whose surname was then changed to Bezos. The family moved to Houston, Texas, where Mike worked as an engineer for Exxon after he received a degree from the University of New Mexico. Bezos attended River Oaks Elementary School in Houston from 4th to 6th grade. Bezos was the maternal grandson of Lawrence Preston Geese, a regional director of the U.S. Atomic Energy Commission in Albuquerque. Through his grandfather, Bezos gained a love of science. Geese retired early to his family's ranch near Cotola, Texas, where Bezos would spend many summers in his youth. Bezos would later purchase this ranch and grow it to 25,000 acres. His maternal grandmother was Maddie Louise Geese, through whom he is a cousin of country singer George Strait. Bezos often displayed scientific interests and technology proficiency. He once rigged an electric alarm to keep his younger siblings out of his room. The family moved to Miami, Florida, where Bezos attended Miami Palmetto High School. While Bezos was in high school, he worked at McDonald's as a short order line cook during the breakfast shift. He attended the student science training program at the University of Florida, where he received a Silver Knight Award in 1982. He was a high school valedictorian and a National Merit Scholar. In 1968, he graduated from Princeton University with a 4.2 grade point average and a Bachelor of Science degrees in Electrical Engineering and Computer Science, and was also a member of Phi Beta Kappa. While at Princeton, he was also elected to Tau Beta Pi and was the president of the Princeton Chapter of Students for the Exploration and Development of Space. After graduating from Princeton, Bezos fielded multiple offers from large firms, but ultimately decided on the boutique financial communication startup, Fatel, where he was tasked with building a network for international trade. Bezos was promoted to head of development and director of customer service thereafter. He transitioned into the banking industry when he became a product manager at Bankers Trust. He worked there from 1988 to 1990. Bezos worked for six years after college before launching the company that would make him famous around the world. In late 1993, Bezos decided to start an online bookstore. Bezos named his new company Amazon, after the Amazon River in South America, in part because the name begins with the letter A. He accepted an estimated $300,000 from his parents and invested it straight into Amazon. He warned many early investors that there was a 70% chance that Amazon would fail or go bankrupt. Although Amazon was originally an online bookstore, Bezos had always planned to expand to other products. Three years after Bezos founded Amazon, he took it public with an initial public offering. In response to critical reports from fortunes and parents, Bezos maintained that the growth of the internet would overtake competition from larger book retailers such as Borders and Barnes & Noble. Fast forward to 2018, Bezos succeeded in derailing most major brick and mortar bookstores and has become the paragon of e-commerce as we know it, putting such dynasties as Walmart and Target at risk. In March 2018, U.S. President Donald Trump accused Amazon, and Bezos specifically, of sales tax avoidance, misusing postal routes, and anti-competitive business practices. Amazon's share price fell by 9% in response to the president's negative comments. This reduced Bezos' personal wealth by $10.7 billion. Weeks later, Bezos recouped his losses when academic reports out of Stanford University indicated that Trump could do little to regulate Amazon in any meaningful way. Of course, it can be very stressful to run one of the world's largest companies, but Bezos seems to handle it with ease and relaxation. But it just proves that there is not one set path to success. Other billionaires seem to have different personal practices that are totally in conflict with Bezos' methods. For example, billionaire Donald Trump only sleeps four hours in a given night, and Elon Musk has a frenetic schedule, with tasks divvied up into five-minute increments. Musk usually skips breakfast. Occasionally, he will slow down long enough to grab a quick coffee and an omelet. Once he's up, Musk launches into a blistering schedule that breaks his time into a series of five-minute slots. The entrepreneur has been known to work 85 to 100 hours a week, and he estimates that 80% of his time at work is spent on engineering and design. But Trump's relatively paltry $3 billion and Musk's $19 billion pale in comparison to some of the wealthiest people in the world. For comparison, let's explore the habits of Bill Gates and Warren Buffett, who in many ways have set the mold for the modern billionaire. For one thing, neither one of them works constantly. They keep busy, but generally have a relaxed routine. Gates generally skips breakfast, unless he opts for a bowl of his favorite Cocoa Puffs. He then works out on a treadmill through an educational DVD. Beyond working out, Gates loves to stay active and is a big fan of tennis. 
Next in his morning routine, Gates checks the headlines every morning. He typically reads the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, and The Economist. According to The Telegraph, his schedule is broken up into five-minute intervals, just like Tesla founder Elon Musk. Every moment is carefully planned. It's a jam-packed routine, but the billionaire keeps track of his plans and ideas by jotting down notes. But that doesn't mean that Gates doesn't give himself any break. He is a famously voracious reader and always sets some time aside to hit the books. He also recommends a ton of titles on his personal website. And much like Bezos, he is always certain to do the dishes every night. And when it comes to time for bed, Gates makes sure that he turns in early enough to snag seven hours of shut-eye. Let's compare that to the daily routine of Warren Buffett, the third richest man in the world, with $85.1 billion. Buffett wakes up every day at 6.45 a.m. I have no desire to get to work at 4 in the morning, he says. Buffett starts his morning by reading the Wall Street Journal, USA Today, and Forbes, according to CNBC. Before he heads to McDonald's, Business Insider reported that every morning, his wife Astrid either places $2.61, $2.95, or $3.17 in his car's cup holder. At McDonald's, $2.61 buys him two sausage patties, $2.95 snags him a sausage McMuffin with egg and cheese, and a bacon egg and cheese biscuit costs $3.17. He goes for the more expensive options when he's feeling prosperous, <coughs> the business insider. He then washes down the fast food with some Coca-Cola. Buffett usually drinks about five cans of Coke a day. Berkshire Hathaway also owns stock in Coca-Cola. He once told his fortune, I'm one quarter Coca-Cola. The chairman also has a soft spot for strawberry milkshakes. I checked the actuarial tables, and the lowest death rate is among six-year-olds, Buffett told Fortune. So I decided to eat like a six-year-old. It's the safest course I can take. It's clear that Buffett is young at heart, and still has a good sense of humor. But it's been reported that the billionaire still finds time to exercise, in part to counteract his diet. According to CNBC, sometimes the Berkshire Hathaway chairman doesn't roll into work until after the market opens. Once he's in the office, he hits the books. CNBC reported that Buffett estimates he spends 80% of his day reading. He recommends that people try to read at least 500 pages a day. During the day, he stays abreast of the headlines by reading the Financial Times, the New York Times, the Omaha World Herald, and American Banker, according to CNBC. When it comes time for lunch, Buffett has been known to take people out for a treat at McDonald's. CNBC reported that he once bought his friend Bill Gates a meal at the fast food giant using coupons. When it comes time to grab some shut-eye, Buffett likes to be in bed by 10.45 p.m. I get quite a bit of sleep. I like to sleep, he told PBS. So I will usually sleep eight hours a night. So, what have we learned from the top tier of the ultra-wealthy? What exactly does it take to reach this upper echelon of financial success? They all seem to get enough rest and give themselves a break during the day. But beyond that, they don't share a lot in common. But one thing is absolutely true. They follow their passion. Each of them has the fortune to retire a million times over. But they continue to do the work because they love it. Perhaps the late Steve Jobs said it best when he stated, You've got to find what you love. The only way to do great work is to love what you do. If you haven't found it yet, keep looking. Don't settle. As with all matters of the heart, you'll know when you find it. Thanks for watching this top trending video. If you enjoyed Make sure to leave a like.